I'm thinking about Madeline in World War II again. And I know that's a big dramatic thing to say. You say, World War II anything, and the curtains with the black spider drop down, and everyone holds their breath for a second, and you're deemed serious by your peers. But Ludwig Bemelmans wrote Madeline in 1939. The Germans marched into Paris in 1940. She would have been eight years old. They wore gray, and she most definitely wore blue. Miss Clavel and her girls taking their walk at half past nine in two straight lines in rain or shine just to see four straight lines of Nazis marching under the Arc de Triomphe in rain or shine. I like to think Madeline sticks her chin out and gives them a good old poo-poo, while Genevieve growls and tries to tear at one of the soldier's pant legs because she is an excellent judge of character. And then, because it's me, and I can't not, I start to think of all my other heroes of similar ilk and their future demons. I wonder whether Dorothy Gale was a suffragist or a suffragette, because the Witches of Oz already taught her long ago that she too holds power where a man only pretends to. Still in her blue gingham, heels clicking as she marches up the steps of the Capitol building, sign in hand. I envision an almost 40-year-old Eloise in the lobby of the plaza, screaming her head off that there will be a cold day in hell before she lives in a building that is owned by Donald Trump. Because she is also an excellent judge of character. And being a woman of her word, she packs up her bags and moves out for the next seven years. But not before branding her name on the wall in the most fearsome grade of permanent marker. Think about the members of the Babysitter's Club. Some maybe starting to have children of their own on the day the Twin Towers fell. Was Stacy living in Stony Brook or New York at that point? Because God knows that girl could never make up her mind. She had to have the mediocrity of both worlds. The members who are mothers hold their children so so tight and tell them not to live in fear but it's okay to have a little right now characters like to act like they never age that time doesn't affect them but there's more than one way to become immortal as we declare our love for them an onion skin peels off and bunches up under our rib cage, and we carry it with us, keeping it warm and safe like an incubation tank. And one day we wake up to find it's evaporated into our bloodstream. And after I've run the circuit, I can't help but think of all those characters I created when I did not yet know the extent of my power whose fantastic adventures have simmered and faded into memory. And they're having to deal with this hell right now.